Can you teach me to draw a torso easier? Yeah. Yes, I can. Do you think you can build a face structure from a simple happy face? <laughs> oh, 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 I've actually had that asked before. Let me do the let me do the happy face one first. Dun, 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 dun. If you know the actual spacing for things, you're able to do a lot. So the thing is, right? The happy face is literally just guidelines. What you do with the guidelines is all going to be relative to the If you know the actual spacing for things, you're able to do a lot. So the thing is, right? The happy face is literally just guidelines. What you do with the guidelines is all going to be relative to the number. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, my hands are nice and, like, hands are, like, I have really awesomely soft hands for a dude, I guess. But that's because I don't really put a lot of, like, you know, like, stress on them. And I've met some girl jiu-jitsu fighters that, like, make grown countrymen like cry with the roughness of their hands so it's not really whatever side you decide to draw from that being big burly fingers or nice delicate fingers it's the same approach so you're not gonna be drawing any different Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for being my drawing buddies today. Uh, thank you for the support. So that's what a sushi is. A sushi is really good for posing. Sushis are a universal master shape. So you can't get it wrong. It doesn't matter what you draw. You can always make it into a pose. So I absolutely love little sushis. So what is it? Sushi perspective lines say punching towards you. Well, think about it like this. Okay. If you simplify it to the point like this, you're only, you're doing a sushi up until, a, you're not doing a cylinder or a cone, you're connecting it to a dot at the end. So if your dot is going down here, just connect the dot. If your dot is going towards you, your dot's right there. That's normally what you're good mm. at. What you're good at, what you yeah. can make money with, and what makes you happy. If you have something mm. that makes all three of those things work, any of those three fancies that get tickled, is a suitable thing, but if all three get like, you know, like set in place, make a Venn diagram if you need to, like, and just mm. put the things that you love inside and see how you can make money or how you can find happiness with what makes you really joyful. And that is your calling. Like, if you do anything outside of that, you're always going to want one of those things in your life more. So if you find something that has all three and everybody's different, it's going to be like a, like a fingertip, you know, maybe somebody's like being a mortician, you know, that's their mm. thing. They can be the, like <laughs> happy as being a mortician. That's perfectly fine. If that's your thing, dude, like you pursue that because that's good. going to make you happy. And in artwork, it comes down a lot to the foundations of drawing, which every art teacher will ever tell you are perspective and anatomy. But those right. themes are normally seen as incredibly boring because... Mm. 
the teachers don't explain it in a way that makes it fun and interesting to people, right? Uh, yeah. If you draw a circle or a sphere enough, you don't really get much satisfaction. But if you use that knowledge and you show people what they can do with it immediately, like literally drawing in front of them, like what I like to mm -hmm. do is I like to draw live. I don't like to do pre-recorded videos or yeah. just talk over my yeah. like, you know, speed runs. I like to show people how they can build their drawings as they go by showing visual examples yeah. of how easy it can get to. So it's not, uh, it's mm. not about like demonstrating my superiority in art skills to everybody else is to show that once you get to a certain level, it becomes second nature. So you end up with this little shape. This little shape, again, can be used for simple structures or you can use this for more complicated structures. So it doesn't have to be super simple. It can actually start getting a little bit more intricate. The way that you learn to move this is by taking that middle circle and learning how to rotate the top shape around. And you learn how to move the bottom shape around. What up, Wes? So as you learn how it's just pivoting around that midsection, now you can start playing around with where your legs go. The Jeff Watts Atelier is probably an amazing school. Amazing school. It's probably a, a top-notch school. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Again, it's inaccessible to 90% of the people because they can't afford it. So why even support that? Having time to do art is a privilege on its own. Yeah, unless you try to make it your full-time job, and then you're doing it as your job. The only reason that you think like, oh, it's a privilege is because you haven't dig like, do you think that a plumber sees it as a privilege to be able to like do plumbing or a lawyer sees it as a privilege to like take on a case? No, it's just part of their job. So if you don't see it as your job, as you see it as your hobby, if you see it like something that you do on the side, then yeah, of course, you're not going to have enough time to draw because you're not giving it the priority. So essentially all we've been doing right now is been doing eyes with this technique. That has been everything we do today. Like everything you guys have seen me draw is that technique. It's a thick line as a curvature for the top line and then a thinner line to round out the shape. By doing that, you're replicating your eyelashes and you're replicating some depth by having overlapping lines, which later on can lead to being able to use that for your little ear type, you know, like tear ducts. And Really, really 
but you're never going to be able to draw a car in space going and doing cool things because you don't know what a car includes. So if you don't have the ability or the knowledge, there's no way you're going to do this. It's kind of like drawing a face. If you don't know how to draw a face, if you don't know what a human face looks like and you've never drawn one, the odds are you're not going to be able to draw one much more than like an iconic one like this, right? So it's the same thing with vehicles, buildings, creatures, animals, plants, anything, realism, cartooning, TVs, anime, all that crap. It's the same shit. You just need to focus, hyper-focus on that one thing and suck at it a little bit so that you can eventually be good at it. The price of entry is a little bit of humiliation. Anyways, hope you guys have a fantastic morning. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Uh, I'm about to go get some groceries because I'm starving. So if you don't have any lips, yes, you have a lot less that your volume has to cover. So whenever you are drawing them, also chins and stuff like that are different. So you can have people that have very different drastic features. Right, and you can have people from certain ethnicities that have a more pronounced jaw structure, and then you have people that don't have that. People that have a more receded one. And this, my friends, is why we learn anatomy as artists, so that you don't appear ignorant whenever you are trying to explain or roast people and do stuff like that. Right. This is why knowledge is important. <laughs> this is why we don't learn through stylizing and we learn through actual knowledge. Right? So creating a little bit of foreshortening. Now this person can have their spine, right? Their spine is going to be in the back of their shape, so you can choose wherever it's going to be leaning. If you want the character to be leaning forward, you're going to have the head coming this way. If you want the character reading a book or leaning forward, you're going to have that shape coming this way. So your spine, again, is the bone that controls the movement of your body and your head. So learning how your spine works, and it's the back of your body, learning how to pivot that on this little circle helps you understand how to draw characters in different positions. Learning that your body is controlled by your body. You got to just learn what part of your body is controlling it. The optimal way that I'm going to be happy recreating the character over and over and over and over again. Let's see. Uh, hmm. I've always enjoyed the whole body wrap thing. I don't know why, uh, but in Aladdin pants. The main reason for Aladdin pants is it's so easy to draw the bottom part of your characters like this. <laughs> because you kind of skip the kneecap. <laughs> so if you do these sort of pants, it makes it really easy to be able to draw the bottom parts of your legs. <laughs> but again, you need to know the rules before you break them. So don't just go doing Aladdin pants all the time. Thrusting. Beyond the sound on the phone. The 
Yes, he's trying not to move. It's a three-way call and he knows nothing. No, Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. Scotty doesn't know. He left me roses by the stairs Surprises let me know she cares It ain't so, I will not go Turn the lights off, carry me home Say it ain't so, I will not go Turn the lights off, carry me home Keep your head still, I'll be your friend And never go on